so me and Peter are on our way now to a customer who I was at yesterday. I was doing an AC tune-up on both of her green central AC systems, and one of the motors was bad. It was spinning so slow that the coil was freezing, and it was over-amping by three times. So I told them it was bad, I had a new one in the truck, put the new one in, and it started smoking. So I picked up an original Ream motor in Islandia, which is an hour and a half away from the job, and I'm coming back now today to install that. Hopefully this one doesn't start smoking. So here's the old fan motor that was broken or that burned out. Um, had it wired for high speed, which is the purple, the white and the black wire. These two wires right here. One went to the relay, the other went to install 208 from the inlet of the transformer and that's how the original one was wired, so I wired it up the same way. And I had my two browns connected to the capacitor. And these are to change the rotation, which were correct. So now I'm going to take off these bolts right here. And then I'll take off the fan wheel and get the new motor in. I have the Malco 7-in-1, uh, I think they call it. And it does all the sizes I need. This is the exact size for the... Now to take the fan and blower wheels off, off the shaft, and it should be loose since I put it on yesterday. And I'll make sure to line it up so that it's at the same height with the brackets as the original one is. So that same size does the bolt for the little bracket. And take that off. that it roughly needs to sit at just about the top of the motor. So we'll slide all these back in. Keep it level with the ground because it's about where they need to be. up a little bit. Make sure these are all straight and lined up how they're supposed to be. And then I'll go on. Tighten it all the way. that out of the way for now. Let's slide this new fan motor. I need that on there. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. right down onto it. And it slides right in. And I'll flip it all over. Carefully without damaging the wheel. And I'll line all of 
these up where they need to go. And screw all of those in. Get a little bit of washer on top of that rubber. A uh, little vibration pad, vibration stopper. Kind of a pain to line up. And that one's in. And draw. For now, not fully tight because I'm gonna have to adjust if the wheel doesn't sit properly. Okay. And what I'm doing is lining up this flat part with that uh, set screw that holds it into place. And we do that carefully without damaging it. And we're good. Get it a little bit tight. And then flip it over on its side. And what I did last time was I took a screwdriver and got roughly the same amount of spacing on each side by just kind of estimating with how the screwdriver passes, making sure it passes the same way on each side. It's tricky because every time you move it a little bit it wants to move a lot. Okay, and then we'll tighten up that set screw with an adjustable so I don't strip it out. Good. Uh, let me see it. Here's the capacitor put into place, and the wiring is tightened up nice and neat. Now I'm gonna take the wheel, just double check that it's spinning freely, which it is, and I'm gonna mount it. This control board. Without pinching the water. And my ground screw will go right on the bottom. The screw that melts this into place. Then I have one more screw right here. And these three are coming out. Lift 
interesting this cover. I don't know. And here's our connection for our first 208 line, which we're actually gonna bring. Stretch it so we're gonna go we're gonna go into it and we'll make a new indent in the casing for it. Flip it around so I'm not crushing that wire that's there already. And for this, there was originally a spade connector here, but I removed it for the old motor. So I have a way go. And that's just taking off the 208 that comes right in. And I'll neaten up all this wiring and we'll turn it on and get it running. So we have that fan on and running and I know the cover's off, but I'm still amping it out and you can see we're only at 3.3, which is perfect. Running nicely, we're not freezing like we were yesterday, just condensating. And here's the old motor, which spins totally freely, it has no visual defects on it, but it started smoking on me and just kept running. I don't know why the thermal overload didn't shut it off, but. wiring was good. I did black and white, which is the 208 for high speed. This is upside down, but... And my browns were on capacitor. So here we have the black for high. Uh, where are we? white and black for high line for 208 volts and uh, 20 capacitor and here's all the other information but for some reason it just wasn't working so that's it motor was running perfectly. Um, I don't understand what happened with the second motor that I had, the first replacement motor, and why it started smoking when everything on that motor was good. Um, it seems odd to me. This is the second motor that's happened to me on too, but the first motor was cracked, like in half, so it's definitely because of the crack, but this motor, I don't know. I'm keeping it. Uh, I have the box, and maybe Mike will send it back. But new motor ran perfectly fine. Didn't get hot. Amped out good. Uh, Airflow's good. The coil wasn't freezing anymore, and the customer was happy. So I don't know. Comment down below what you think the issue might have been. Uh, I was asking people in the Mikey pipes. What's up? What they like? They think the issue might be, and nobody at the stop sign. Be able to, uh, make a U-turn, then prepare to park your car. I, I, you it could have just been a dog motor, but that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like the video, and if you like the video, subscribe.